Hey guys, Boris Nasser, BK Force. Welcome to the weekly technicals for the majors for Euro dollar, dollar yen, and pound dollar for October 9th, October 13, 2017. Really, the week of what I would call idiosyncratic trade, and that's just simply fancy words for saying that everybody goes their own separate ways. One of the interesting things that the charts are showing is that there's a massive divergence amongst all the majors in terms of how they're going to be trading. So it's not necessary that it's going to be a pro dollar, anti dollar trade. Everybody's going to have, I think, their own unique story. Before we get to the event risk and the charts, let's just take a look at the levels for all of the currencies. They've moved down on some. Uh, for Euro dollar, support now lies 1650. Resistance now is at around 1900. Uh, dollar yen remained relatively the same. We're still essentially in that 114, 111 zone, very, very wide zone um, as I've carved it out. I guess you could, you could tighten it up to making it really 112, 113, but really the, the broader zone is the more accurate one. And cable really moved down. And we're very, very close to testing this 130 support, which is one of my favorite trades as we go into the week. I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. But before that, let's take a look at the calendar, which is actually very, very quiet this week. We don't have literally any major event risk, not just in the majors, but on the uh, com dollars as well. So on the majors, we just have a smattering of second tier data, trade balance out of Germany, Monday, um, Canada is closed, Japan is closed, U.S. is closed as far as banking goes. Um, the equity markets are going to be open. So that's not even a, not even going to be half a day, really. Um, then we have U.K. manufacturing industrial production, also smattering of second-tier data um, on there. Inflation data starts to come out on Thursday, Friday with PPI and CPI to the U.S. That will be interesting, but I don't know if it will be material because I don't know, unless we, we get a very, very hot inflation reading uh, out of CPI, the market is looking... X food, X energy, basically the same numbers. So um, still underneath the 2.0 level. So not really any kind of pickup in inflation. If we do print higher, that will be dollar positive. But for now, um, I don't think anybody anticipates any, any big movements. We do get um, Chinese data, which I guess we'll talk about in the uh, on the com dollar side. But it's about really the only major stuff that's left. And only finally at the end, only on Friday of the week, do we have any material economic data, which is the retail sales out of the U.S. We'll see how that trades out. Also, of course, um, it's going to be an interesting number because because in some ways you could say there was a big uh, decline because of the hurricanes, but at the same time there was a huge, huge uh, return after the hurricanes. So I wonder what the overall retail sales number will be for September. We'll be looking at that. The market is anticipating essentially uh, on a control group 40 basis points, uh, definitely a, a pickup from uh, from the month prior. This will be interesting because I think if, if, if we get a negative read or a smaller than expected retail sales control group read, that actually is very troubling. To me, weak retail sales is just as troubling as weak inflation in terms of making a case for, for rate hikes um, out of the Fed. So we'll be watching that pretty carefully um, as the week comes out. But as you can see, the calendar itself, very, very quiet, really not much going on. Now, to the charts, there's actually a lot more stuff that's going on. One of the more interesting things, I think, on the charts here is the fact that even though the euro dollar, and I have this on a, on a weekly, let me just get a little bit bigger here. Um, even though the euro dollar looks negative, it actually, I think, in some ways isn't. And I'll tell you why. When you look at the technicals on this thing, first of all, I love the buy-ups. That is where it tests the lows and kind of bounces off the lows. Similarly, as I like this, you know, generally I like the turns um, on the sell downs because to me, candles that's probably the single greatest value of candles is it is it instantaneously tells you certain levels were bought as value levels now they may remain value levels for very long or sold as value levels for very for a very short period of time but the preponderance sort of the the operating assumption should always be that those are legitimate levels and you need to uh, pay attention to them and when you look at this you see that the 1650s were essentially bought twice here so now we have a potential here for a double bottom um, and this really makes euro long a very, very small risk trade. My point being is that I think it's an interesting uh, small risk, uh, small trade to the upside because the risk here is very minuscule. It's really only about 80, 90 pips. If, if it breaks the 1650, you're completely wrong uh, on the trade. However, um, if there is a, a continued positive movement on the euro here, the press up could be as high as 18, 1850, maybe even 1900 uh, on any kind of an anti-dollar move. So... To me, the actual trade here, even though it looks negative, the more interesting trade here is positive for a small bounce in the euro. Conversely, the yen doesn't look negative, but it certainly doesn't look positive. And I'll tell you why. When you look at the weekly here, what you see is just a massive amount of hesitation around this 1300 level. 
We certainly got rejected. We, as a matter of fact, we ended up on the lows of the day today um, after a very, very bullish data set um, on the U.S. side. Well, you know, bullish in the sense that the, that the average hourly wages were much stronger than expected. The employment numbers were bad, but and nobody expected the employment numbers to be any good. Still, the fact that we ended up on the lows of the day, whenever, we, you know, my favorite um, sort of observation is when, when fundamentals are positive and technicals are negative, when price action diverges from what, what fundamentals are telling you, in other words, when price action does the opposite of what seems reasonable and rational, you always want to trust price action. Now, of course, there's a lot of stuff embedded in here. There's fear of North Korea. I'm, I'm type taping this um, Friday afternoon, New York time, so nobody knows what's going to happen over the weekend. If, if North Korea does any kind of a missile test, certainly we're going to open up uh, very negative in Asia. But generally, um, my point is that yen is not a long. Dollar yen is not a long until and unless 1350 gets taken out and, and, and ideally gets closed at the daily high. So if we get a big reversal, the market kind of calms down, believes U.S. yields going up, and we end up 1350 somewhere on a closing basis during the daytime um, next week, that to me would be a buy signal for potentially move all the way out to this 14, 1450 level. Until then, I think I'd rather just stand back. Or if you really want to get get um, speculative, you can take a short here against this 1350 close and see if we get more downside action as the uh, as the price action goes by. Now we're going to let the New York City ambulances pass by, and it's actually that was actually a police car, I think. Um, and focus on my favorite trade of the start of the week, which is cable. Cable clearly looks like a momentum short. And more importantly, it's within this very, very important 130 level, which is a clear psychological level. So I think the shorts are really going to want to run the, um, the 130 level on any kind of excuse possible. Of course, Theresa May's disastrous speech really didn't help matters. We don't have much on UK data, but maybe, you know, the small amount of data, the manufacturing data that we have out of UK, that if it turns negative, certainly can provide a catalyst for a move down. The one um, caveat I have with any cable trades is they tend to be kind of bounce out. So you can have an analog here where you have a strong close to the downside. It takes a couple of weeks actually for um, the trade to resolve itself to the downside. Um, my view is I think we, we, we'd certainly test, maybe not, not break, but test the 130s this week um, just because we're so in such clear proximity and any kind of excuse will give us a run to the downside. Um, uh, the support really doesn't come into around 2950, somewhere around here, and that's really where the rubber is going to hit the road. Maybe even 20, basically around 2890, somewhere around there. So there's potential here to extend, uh, but we certainly can get a bounce back up because this is cable. Overall, though, cable to me is very much a sell the rally trade all the way up to 134. It is clearly sent a very, very strong sell signal. You really need to believe that. Theresa May gets everything under control, that soft Brexit suddenly becomes a, a viable possibility, and that um, Europeans really want to negotiate in good faith to, to, to want to maintain UK within the Union one way or the other. All of that stuff really has to turn significantly um, up to completely uh, renege this very, very strong red candle. I'm going to trust the red candle and believe that there's more continuation to the downside for now and sell every rally I have if there is a rally. Uh, or sell the uh, momentum to the downside with a scale up trade um, all the way up to like 33, 50, 34 on the assumption that this is going to turn lower before it turns higher. So that's how I think the major is going to set up this week. Uh, everybody has their own story. That's what makes it so interesting. And that's what makes it hopefully so enjoyable as we uh, start the week. Wish you guys the best luck throughout best of trading. Bush Lossberg, over and out.